In this demo, we're going to talk about the elision shape and the delay shape. And it was kind of hard to work that into my standard purchase order example. So this is an example I actually created to teach about property schemas. And I've created here a orchestration, an orchestration called Listen and Delay Demo. Okay, so what we're going to need here is, first of all, make a couple of messages. So we'll do add new message. And let's, let's suppose, and actually in this case, I do have uh, two different schemas for employees. I have one called new employee. So we'll call this the message new employee. And then I also have one called update employee. These little boxes are a little too small down here. So this is called employee update. So let's give it an appropriate name. I always start my messages with MSG and then call it update employee. Now, let's suppose you don't know which one of these messages you're going to receive, but you want to start your orchestration with one or the other. So if you just put a receive here, then how are you going to receive the other one? If you have the other receive, that would be below the first receive, and that means the first receive would have to be an activating receive, and this would have to be a correlated receive, which is, I believe, also called a convoy. So how can we put both shapes at the top of our orchestration? So we use for the first time the listen shape. And so the listen shape has the first box in a listen shape can only be a receive or a delay. For instance, if I try to right click here, you see only two things are highlighted. Let me scroll that up for you. You can see receive, you can see delay. I can't put a call rules. I can't put a parallel or a loop or anything else. Only these two shapes are allowed as the first shape. However, the second sh shape here says drop any shape, basically. So now I have my full list of shapes available. So what I can do is I can move my, re my receives up here. And this one I will tag to be the new employee. And this one I will tag to be the update employee. So let's give them nicer descriptions. So now they could actually both be activating receives. So we can set both to true. And what that means is if I receive either this message or this message, then this orchestration will start. And then you could continue to have whatever logic you want in the orchestration. Okay, the next thing you can do is you can actually have more than one branch here, just like with a uh, parallel shape or a scope. You can right click here and say new listen branch, and you can click it again and add another branch. So you can see you could actually have one, two, three, four, actually five, ten, twenty of these if you wanted to. And you could have as many listens as you want. So you could have receive new employee, receive update employee, receive delete employee. And then this wouldn't apply on an activating receive, but if this if this were not at the beginning of your orchestration, you could put a delay shape here. And so what the delay shape would do is you come here and at the top of this box, it's it's a BizTalk expression editor, but it only allows one statement, and that's called the time span. So you actually run the constructor here for a new system time span. And BizTalk, of course, has this little option here where you can actually see all the different constructors for a class. And I don't like to use ticks. I like to use hours, minutes, seconds. So I want 0 hours, 10 minutes, and 0 seconds. And then you do not put the semicolon in this one. But that seems to be a little inconsistent. Some message boxes you put the semicolon and some you don't. Okay, so this basically means wait 10 minutes. Okay, so what would happen, again, if this were not the first, uh, let's say we have another receive up here, and let's say these were not activating receives. And by the way, I could delete this branch here. To delete it, it's kind of tricky. You have, to, you have to click where you get both of these at the same time. So if you click here, that doesn't do it. But if you click the line or above, you see how the whole thing kind of shades? Sorry, I lost it. Then you right click and do delete, and that branch will go away. So now let's say we receive some message, and then later we're going to correlate. We're going to receive either this message or this message. But then you can say, is like, what happens if nothing happens for 10 minutes? So you say here, delay 10 minutes. So in other words, we're supposed to receive after this message, within 10 minutes, either this message or this message. 
And so what happens here is only one of these three branches will happen. We'll either receive a new, brand, a new employee, and this branch will execute, or we will receive an update employee, and this, this branch would execute, or 10 minutes will elapse, and then this branch would execute. And so here we could insert something like a throw exception or a terminate or something like that. And we could say here, message has not been received after 10 minutes. And instead of putting hard coding the 10 minutes there, I would probably make that a variable. But anyway, this is just an example. And then, of course, if we received a message, we could then maybe have a map or something. We might have a construct here. We might have a construct here. And then maybe we're going to send this message. You can add additional shapes here, like that. Just click on this little section and then insert shape. And so maybe we map this message and then we send it to our SAP system or something to add the employee. Whereas on this branch, we just terminate and that will issue a message back into hat where we can see this message right here. So that is one example of how to use listens and delays. Now, uh, delays can be used anywhere in your orchestration. They don't have to be used in a listen. So for instance, right here, if you wanted to, you could put a delay of, say, five seconds. So you put here zero, 0,5. We got an underscore for some reason here. Oh, because this time I do need to put the semicolon. Again, I always, I thought it said you did, it didn't want the semicolon. That one doesn't seem to want it, but this one wanted it. That's weird. Oh, that's really weird. So delay inside of a listen doesn't need a semicolon. Huh. But a delay anywhere else in your program does need a semicolon. Very strange. Okay, so here we're going to wait five seconds. So I would always put on here delay and then like five secs or something like that so that your box, notice it is the clock symbol. So the words in the box will actually indicate what's happening here. And why might you want to put a delay in your program other than a listen? It's really not that common. It might be used for debugging, where you might want to actually slow down your orchestration, where other things can happen. Um, another good example I've used with the delay is in a loop. So for instance, if we have a loop here, and then right, right here you might have, uh, for instance, check inventory. This is actually something we did at a company I worked for in the past. Okay, so we check the inventory. If it's not an inventory, what we're going to do is we're going to wait like a certain amount of time. Now, in this case, not five seconds. At the place I was working, we only checked maybe twice a day. So every 12 hours, so this is hours, minutes, seconds. So it's actually 12, zero, zero. So we'll call this delay 12 hours. So in this loop, you're going to basically keep checking the inventory every 12 hours. We're assuming that shipments come in maybe at 9 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. And BizTalk is not going to know how to check at exactly a certain time of day. He's just going to wait 12 hours, and then when the orchestration wakes up from hydration, it will run the next statement. So we have a loop. We check the inventory. If it's not an inventory, we loop again. And then we check the inventory. If it's not inventory, we loop again. And then you could also have a counter in here that says something like, uh, we'll use a decide shape. And meanwhile, we'd increment a counter here. So we need a little expression and say something like counter equals counter plus one. And then here we would say if counter is greater than max, which might be 100. So after 100 times, the reason that's red is I have not actually declared a variable called counter. Let me do that off the video. So here's a new variable now called counter. So here, if counter is greater than 100, then we want to do some other action, maybe send a message to the inventory manager to tell him, you know, what's wrong with your inventory. Otherwise, we just keep looping. So in this video, to recap, we've learned about the delay shape. The last example we did was to delay 12 hours in checking inventory inside of a loop. The first example of a delay was that in a listen shape, the first shape of each branch must either be a receive or a delay. After that, you can put whatever shapes you want. 
The reason for this is you're going to receive one of X number of messages, but you don't know which one you're going to receive, but you're going to receive one of them. So whichever one is received, that branch of logic will actually execute. If after X a number of time, X amount of time has passed and you do not receive one of these two messages, then you could have this branch actually execute. An example of how I use this at a place I worked recently was we received HIPAA transactions and there were three types. They were all called 837s, which is a type of EDI transaction, and they were either professional, dental, or institutional. And so we had one orchestration processed all three types of messages. So in our branch here, we had receive 837P for professional, 837D for dental, and then the third branch was receive institutional, and then we had a delay. So there's a couple ideas on how you can use this in your orchestrations. Thank <laughs> you.